Hello everyone, welcome to GGN Today's Tuesday, October 16th, 2012. I'm Darko. And today we're going to cover all kinds of different news, including the economy, um, Big Brother, and Police State. So, uh, first one I have for you is Switzerland aiming in preparation for European meltdown. This is from October 12th, and some of you probably already seen this. And this actually I've covered probably about a year ago. Uh, but it's coming back in the headlines. It says the Swiss Army is preparing contingency plans for violent unrest across Europe. A nation mostly famous for its banks, watches, chocolate, fears it uh, faces massive influx of European refugees in the near future. In September, the Swiss military conducted ex exercises dubbed uh, Stabilo Du with scenarios involving violent instability across the EU. And like I mentioned just yesterday that the... Um, UK was actually preparing for uh, possible civil unrest and collapse when the collapse of the euro uh, happens, if it does. Switzerland has maintained a uh, neutral stance for decades, of course, because they're a big money laundering scheme, along with the Bank of International Settlements that funds both sides of the wars. It's good business. And refused to join the eurozone when presented with the opportunity, so, uh, much like what London and Britain like that. So they don't want their own interests to be compromised when they set up these crappy systems. They just want to uh, make sure that they can be outside that, outside the repercussions of it. If protests continue to spread across Europe, police and armed forces may find themselves equipped to manage the unrest. It goes on and says a Swiss defense minister said, I will not rule out that we will need the army in the coming years. So the Swiss defense ministry has pressed ahead to modernize the country's army despite political opposition. With its multi-billion franc military budget and an army of around 200,000 soldiers, the country also plans to purchase new Saab uh, Gripen jet fighters. It says that Switzerland stands in stark opposition to the multicultural policies and thinking now uh, common in other European nations. In 2009, they passed a national referendum banning the construction of Islamic uh, minarets. It goes on and says, as professor says, if the next uh, Anders Breivik were to target Muslims, not fellow Europeans, things could get uh, ugly very quickly, which could wide, uh, trigger widespread Muslim uprisings in Europe. So uh, this is followed by something that came out on the 28th or posted. This uh, bill, House Bill, a Mass Fatality Planning and Religious Considerations Act, to amend the Homeland Security Act of 2002 that requires the administrator of uh, basically FEMA to provide guidance and coordination for mass fatality planning and for other purposes. So I'm not saying that, that uh, something's going to happen here in the next month or around the elections. I'm just putting this in there together uh, so that you're aware of it. This is a million to participate in earthquake drill next week. This is from October 11th and one million people across five states and at D.C. are scheduled to take part in the first ever Great Southeast Shakeout, a regional earthquake drill in which participants simultaneously practice the recommended action during an earthquake. So they tell you what to do, how to do it, when to, when to do it, where to go, what to say, what not to say during these disasters. U.N. warns of looming worldwide food crisis in 2013. Global grain reserves hit critically low levels, and extreme weather means climate is no longer reliable, well, of course, because they're spraying. I'll keep mentioning that as long as they keep modifying the weather with geoengineering and, and, and call for it as if it's not happening. It's, the climate's never going to be reliable as far as predicting. Rising food prices threaten disaster and unrest. Of course, chemtrails are the ones that actually are uh, ravaging the crops and stuff like that as well, too. So, And, of course, you have uh, possible natural events like um, a polar shift, which you know people will be like, oh, it's not happening, Darko, and uh, sorry, it, uh, it doesn't happen fast or it doesn't happen slow. Well, I guess we'll see, right? It says here, a desperation, Greece to allow sale of expired foods to citizens. So we just covered this article over here. This is why it's interesting. Spanish authorities are locking up trash cans to prevent people from foraging for food. That's how desperate they're getting. And so pervasive is the problem of scavenging that one Spanish city has resorted to installing locks on supermarket trash bins as a public health precaution. So we've also uh, covered about uh, Spain and in Greece, uh, people uh, bartering and stuff like that as well. But now Greece will allow the sale of expired food at a price lower than the original, a move that the government has not been able to justify, but consumer groups have interpreted as evidence of the inability to stop the escalating costs of commodities, which is completely manufactured as well. So that's not predictable unless you have a stake in it, like a Warren Buffett or something, or a George Soros, and you can make a lot of money while people will starve from the streets and have a, a dumpster dive, right? So it says here, uh, regulations exclude meat and dairy from the list of perishables that can be sold and sets a sealing date so you can continue marketing. 
Yeah, so see, these consumer groups will say this uh, this uh, virtually admits their inability to control prices. Well, why do prices have to be controlled? Why can't they just be uh, uh, driven by the market, by the free market? Well, because the free market doesn't exist. It's completely uh, manufactured. So, And like Greece, life as we know it in America is on a steady and progressively worsening decline. So, yeah, so it's, here, it's an example of what we're going to see in America coming up soon. So, uh, also in Spain, Red Cross seeks donors for Spain Crisis Fund. Now, you know, why would I be covering this? Well, because it's the Red Cross, the Rothschild, Rothschild's own little personal uh, money laundering scheme or whatnot. Uh, but uh, this is the thing. They're locking up dumpsters. They're, you know, the crackdown on bartering and stuff like that. But then the Red Cross is going to come in and help people. Why don't you just let the people help themselves, right? Because there's always money to be made off cri uh, these crises, right, that are usually manufactured from the top down. So, like in Haiti... All those people that are, have uh, uh, endured that most likely harp-induced earthquake, what happened? Well, they had uh, the UN come in, and they got them sick and brought in cholera, and they vaccinated them. And what, are they, what were they left? With a puppet, Martelli, who now they're calling uh, to, for, uh, to oust him, you know, asking for his resignation. They don't want another puppet. They want to be able to determine their own fate, and they can't do that as long as they have a globalist uh, representing them. But my point is is that we all know what happened in Japan and Haiti, which is these uh, charitable uh, organizations, not all of them, but the ma mainly the main ones, the Red Cross and the other one, what'd they do? Well, a lot of that money got lost. They, you know, millions of dollars never actually went to the people. So European banks need to sell up to 4.5 trillion in assets in the next 14 months, IMF warns or threatens, right? They say the deterioration in financial and economic conditions entails greater pressure on bank asset quality and capital. And many of you have probably seen the steps towards IMF domination. Um, they actually laid down steps, you know, the privatization uh, step and the IMF riots that are going to be expected. Uh, they have Greece, what, looking to sell off islands. And, um, and what else? Greece is not poor. It actually has massive untapped reserves of gold, oil, and natural gas. In other words, if the Greeks were to fully exploit their natural resources that are literally right under their feet, they would no longer have any debt problems. They said if they can manage their resources correctly and don't let foreigners come in and steal all of their wealth, things may actually look quite promising for Greece, whereas just in this last article they're saying that Greece is uh, pretty much uh, gone. And then we have Australian government wants to outlaw, outlaw inexpensive alcoholic beverages from the Australian and the uh, the owner of Cryptagon who runs it says home brew, home, you know, brew your own booze. It says cheap wine will be banned under a federal health agency's plan to make drinkers pay at least eight to ten dollars for a bottle of booze. It says the federal government's National Preventative Health Agency will advise this week that a floor price and new taxes be calculated as a way to make alcohol uh, dear. I guess I guess it's harder to get maybe. The prohibition plan to stop cheap drunks binging on discount drinks, including cask wine and clean skins, has delighted health groups but sparked an alcohol industry revolt. So again, very free market, right? Then we have decriminalized drug use. This is in the US, of course, says experts after a six year study, advisors say no serious rise in consumption is likely if possession of small amounts of controlled drugs is allowed. Actually, this is in the UK. Sorry about that, but this is act they're actually pushing this in the United States as well. Um, but we're talking about taxes. There's so much money to be made off alcohol and tobacco and um, drugs. What well, they call illegal drugs or whatever. That uh, I don't think it's ever going to happen it, unless they can tax it so much. But then they, you know, it's going to be so much, and are people going to be able to afford it? So states legalizing marijuana will violate federal law. So they're calling it a constitutional showdown, saying the DEA and uh, drug czars that is. So it's a teleconference call on Monday from the former DEA administrator, director of Office of National Drug Cartel Control Policy. Well, a strong reminder to the U.S. State Department of Justice that if voters in Colorado, Oregon, and Washington pass the ballot measures to legalize marijuana use for adults and tax at sale, the legalization of marijuana still violates federal law, and the passage of these measures could trigger a constitutional showdown. Well, how, yeah, exactly, which would be, what, like a Tenth Amendment, and they secede from the Union, and they say, well, you come, you come, if you really want to enforce it, you come get us. And they will. They will. The feds will come, and they'll raid, and they'll shoot people, innocent people, protesters, uh, squatting, whatever, uh, just in order to get that tax revenue so that they can go around and bully each state and telling them what to do. Now, they're never going to let that go, the feds are, uh, the feds that is, because they just make so much money that they can uh, beef up their big brother and police state and their everything. You can, and that's, of course, for what? So that they can get more taxes.
So UK Scottish authorities to announce terms of referendum that could see the breakup of Britain. It's not a meeting that David Cameron is likely to enjoy. But it goes on, it says the British Prime Minister is going to visit the leader of Scotland's separatist administration on Monday to agree with the terms of a referendum that could break up the UK. So he goes on here and he says that he doesn't want to uh, preside over the demise of the 300-year-old political union. Uh, but practically there is little he can do to stop the politicians in the semi-autonomous Scotland. So, yeah, because it's a tax base. So, third, anarchist jailed for refusing to testify before a secret grand jury from... October 11th. Says a third self described anarchist from the Pacific Northwest has been jailed by federal officials for refusing to speak before a secretive grand jury that accused, uh, that the accused have called a politically motivated modern day witch hunt. So in her mid 20s, this lay limb plant from Seattle was ushered out of the court by authorities on Wednesday after refusing for a third time to answer questions forced on her by a grand jury, a panel of prosecutors convened to determine if the indictment can be issued for a federal crime. It all had to do with what uh, she was one of the handful of people targeted in a series of raids by the FBI and Joint Terrorism Task Force on the 25th, which the feds say was in conjunction with the acts of vandalism that occurred during the May Day protests in Seattle two months prior says as part of their probe, they said that they were demanding that dwellers provide agents with anti-government or anti or anarchist literature in their homes and any flags, uh, flag-making materials, cell phones, hard drives, blah, 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 and black clothing. Ooh. And finishing up, it says that uh, as if they had taken pointers from Orwell's 1984, they took books, artwork, and other literature as evidence, as well as many other personal belongings, even though they seemed to know that nobody there was even in Seattle on May Day, says Plant. So Neil Fox of the Lawyers Guild told Seattle Times that uh, raids like this are there to create a chilling effect by going after lawful, constitutionally allowed private possessions. And we have a video that shows police officers repeatedly pummeling shirtless men in a Jewish youth center in Brooklyn. A volunteer security guard uh, at the center said he called cops because he found the shirtless man drunk and sleeping in the lounge of the center, which pro provides services to young Jewish adults. So there you can see him putting his dukes up. So it says here the two police officers repeatedly pummeled a shirtless man in the youth center after they rose him from sleeping and moved to arrest him. So uh, the two cops uh, basically approached him. He was sleeping on the couch, and they woke him up. And uh, so the guy apparently uh, is resisting arrest. They said they had a little exchange, heated exchange. They busted out the handcuffs, and this guy pushed the male officer's hands away from his body. The officer then uh, charges that the... Uh, video shows punching him in the face while the uh, female officer appears to pepper spray him and beats him in what appears to be a truncheon. So either way, I mean, look at all those pigs, dude. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Ten pigs for one guy sleeping it off under a pool table. Not going to bother anybody. It goes on here, and it says that um, after a two-minute beatdown, another... Eight police officers arrived and handcuffed Halvey, who appears to be unbloodied, the video shows. I regret making the call. I should have let him sleep. It spiraled out of control, said the guy that uh, was running the youth center. So this is what you get for just taking your hands and pushing the cop's hands away with the handcuffs, right? Uh, assaulting a police officer, uh, trespassing, say, uh, resisting arrest, and harassment. But the community source says that the individual who was uh, uh, beaten by police had been allowed to stay in the institute. So there you go, folks. Woman gets 15 quadrillion phone bill. Been seeing these a lot recently. I don't know if that's like some kind of uh, imprinting or something like that. That's 15 zeros if you're counting. And this is the interesting part, right? It goes on and says, and actually it took some tussling with the phone company um, to get them to admit that they had made a mistake. So in other words, they're going to ask, actually have her pay that. And then we have another Obama executive order allows seizure of Americans' bank accounts. I'm pretty sure they can already do that. But So the order now claims the power to freeze all bank accounts and stop any related financial transactions that a sanctioned person may own or try to perform, all in the name of Iran sanctions. So if an individual is deemed a sanctioned person by our CEO, the president, he or she will be unable to obtain access to his or her accounts will be unable. And if the individual that is sanctioned decides that the ruling is unfair, they can't sue. In other words, they've been robbed blind. But it's all very legal, they say. It was originally issued in 95 under Clinton, which was also obliquely related to the Iran problem.
So I guess that's the final solution to take whatever Americans have left. Thank you.